Automatic exposure bracketing is a tool that I use constantly for photos with any drone, for two reasons. To have several photos taken almost at the same time with different exposure values, so I always have one image perfectly exposed. It is a bit like a free insurance policy. When shooting a lot of photos, maybe during a trip abroad, it may happen to have a few shots wrongly exposed, especially against the sun or in low light, and this can be extremely frustrating. The second reason is the extended dynamic range, to get better quality images in certain light conditions, as you will see later on in this video. With Mini 4 Pro we access automatic exposure bracketing in the photo video menu. We have a choice between 3, 5 or 7 photos, while with previous models the choice was limited to 3 or 5. This extra option is useful in scenes with a big difference in luminosity. It is of course possible to take A, E, B photos in vertical format by turning the camera to portrait mode before shooting. The camera takes the shots in rapid succession within a second, each image has an exposure interval of two thirds of a stop. The ISO value remains constant while the shutter speed is modified at each shot. Another new feature introduced with the Mini 4 Pro is the possibility to take bracketed 48 megapixel photos by selecting this mode in the camera tab of the settings or the white balance window before choosing the AEB in the photo video menu. When using the 48 megapixel mode, only three bracketed images will be taken. I like the exposure interface of DJI Fly App with all the settings available from the two tabs of a single window, but there is something poorly planned that could be very easily fixed by DJI. The exposure values are stored in memory for each single photo mode. If we expose for the current light conditions, take a photo and then choose AEB, the exposure values are set to the last time AEB was used, so we have to set the exposure again. The same happens if we choose the 48 megapixel mode. Most photo editing programs can merge to HDR photos taken in automatic exposure bracketing. I do it with Luminar Neo, the program I use for raw post processing and for organizing my photos and video. You will find info about Luminar Neo in the description, together with a coupon code for a discount on the price. You can watch my video about Luminar Neo by clicking on the link above. The benefit of merging to HDR is an increase in the dynamic range of an image. The dynamic range is the difference between the brightest and the darkest parts. A camera has a much lower dynamic range compared to the human eyes. The sensor can reproduce highlights only up to a certain luminosity, after that the whites will be burned and impossible to recover. This is indicated on the histogram by the bars touching the right edge. The same goes for the shadows, below a certain point the sensor will interpret all dark shadows as black, as we can see from the bars bunched up on the left edge. But with the shadows there is more tolerance and can be recovered up to a certain degree. This image was taken before sunset with the full sun in the middle of the frame, partially covered by some very interesting clouds. In the histogram we notice that there are bars bunched up against both the left and right edges. This shows that we are in an extreme dynamic range situation. If we expose to optimize the sun and avoid burning the highlights, the shadows will be way too dark. While if we expose to optimize the shadows, we lose the structure of the sky as the highlights will be burnt beyond repair. The idea behind merging to HDR is to take the shadows from the overexposed images and the highlights from the underexposed ones. By merging several photos we obtain an image with highlights and shadows within a range that can be better reproduced. It is suggested to use RAW files as they contain more information, especially in the shadows. But the JPEG files have improved a lot in the latest generation of DJI drones. 
and the one of the Mini 4 Pro are excellent. I will post downloadable J JPEG files of the photos shown on this video on my website vicvideopic.com so that you can better appreciate the quality. I will add the link in the description as soon as it is ready. I prefer to save both RAW and JPEG files, as occasionally the RAW file happens to have some issues and cannot be used. On these occasions the JPEG files can be used instead. It is also possible to merge the JPEG file to HDR with good results, even though the final image feels a bit more processed. We can further enhance the merge image by color grading. As you can see the result is excellent, much closer to what we see in real life. The sun is perfectly exposed and the structure of the sky outstanding. There is plenty of definition in the elements in the ground, while a good amount of contrast is retained. Notice that in all the photos shown in this video I have not used any local adjustments that are very useful to further reduce the dynamic range. When using merge images local adjustments are not needed. Here we can see the same subject with different degrees of dynamic range to compare the results obtained with a single image versus photos merged to HDR. On all these images the merged photos retain a much larger amount of information in the shadows and there is more room to play with while editing. The colors are also much richer. Automatic exposure bracketing also works on vertical photos and the result with merge image is just as good as with regular landscape images. In drone photography the sky is very often in the frame with some degree of dynamic range. I generally merge the bracketed photos and in several cases I get better results compared to the single images even when the dynamic range is moderate. Click on this link to watch my review of the Mini 4 Pro for photography. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.